Okay, so right now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over all the different parts to the aquarium filtration system. Uh, I call, I refer to it as the life support system, like what would keep a patient alive in the hospital. In other words, if those machines stop working, the patient dies, or the patient's health could take a turn for the worse. So, um, start out with the pump. The main pump um, is pulling water from this acrylic sump here, which is called the sump. This acrylic box is called the sump. Uh, the pump pulls the water from the sump, um, and it sends it through all the different filtration components. Um, and it either goes, loops back to the sump, or it goes to the exhibit, and then it overflows back to the sump again. Uh, so we have one pump that's doing all the, all the work on this thing. On the reef tank, we have uh, four Three. or five pumps. Oh, oh right. The circulating pumps, yeah. Well, all the different little reactors. And, um, okay, so we have, this is the main pump. It's called a mag drive pump. Um, the motor is only connected to the impeller by a magnet through a wall. So on one side of the wall, the, the motor turns a magnet, and on the other side of the wall is the impeller, which has its magnet, and so when the motor magnet spills, it spins, it spins. And the nice thing about a mag drive motor is it keeps the electronics completely separate from uh, your color versus a direct drive motor where you have to have, have a the shaft seal. It's a pain in the butt that was leaking. So that's the pump. Um, the water goes from the pump um, and it comes up and it splits and it heads off to the protein skimmer loop. Um, here's the protein skimmer. Um, it goes to the protein skimmer and then runs back to the sump. Uh, most of the systems, we're updating them. Um, on the way to the protein skimmer, it's going to go through the carbon reactor. Or it's just a place to uh, carbon is a uh, activated carbon or otherwise known as charcoal. Its job is to pull out organics and heavy metals. Um, the organics will uh, cause the aquarium over time to get like a tea or a tannin, a stained color. So this helps with water clarity and it helps make your, your filtration system more efficient. Um, the next step is the uh, water goes through. The water goes through the activated carbon very slowly. We replace the carbon every two weeks and toss it out. Next, it goes into the protein skimmer. And the protein skimmer's job is to remove oils, organics, and proteins. Uh, it's also known as a foam fractionator. Um, and the way it works is based on, I'll explain the principle first. So if you've ever been to a waterfall or uh, the beach where the waves are crashing, um, what you'll see is, um, you'll see uh, all that air when the wave crashes or when the waterfall is coming down. You ever notice like that nasty brown foam at the base of a waterfall? It's usually off to the side in like a common little eddy. And then right at the base of the water is the white foam. So that's right where the air is getting injected into the water. And this protein skimmer is uh, copying that natural process. So. To further explain it, um, if you've ever seen a pond with a scum on the surface, usually that scum is organics, oils, and proteins. And the ocean has them too. But the ocean is so busy like with waves and um, you don't see it so much. And what happens is uh, all those oils, organics, and proteins, they're uh, hydrophilic. Um, hydrophilic. They're attracted to water. Uh, the water. I'm not sure whether it's hydrophobic. I think it's hydrophobic because they don't want to mix with the water. They don't want to go into solution. Oh. So they like to sit at the air-water interface called the surface of the ocean uh, or the surface of the pond. And that's why when you take that surface and pour it over a waterfall or a wave and it, and it crashes and injects all these air bubbles, all those air bubbles are tiny little air-water interfaces. Right. So those little air bubbles are now like the surface of the pond or the surface of the ocean. And all these organics, oils, and proteins want to stick to that air bubble just like they stick they're, to the water surface. So they're less attracted to the water and more attracted to the air. Right. They want to bind. That's where they, that's where they, homeostasis. They find that, um, that's what they collect. Yep. And so you can think of the bubbles as like little magnets that collect the dirt. And the smaller the bubble, the more efficient the foam fractionating action or the protein skimming that happens. It's like bubble bath. 
It's like a bubble bath. It is just like a bubble bath. The reason a bubble bath works is the compound that's being dumped in is called a surfactant. And it loves that air water interface. So even fresh water with a lower density, you can agitate your bathtub with the bubble bath, which is all these surfactants, but it'll just make foam really quickly. And if you're really dirty, that foam will get like a brown hue to it. So what the protein skimmer does is it copies this natural process. Um, as the water is uh, shot in through this injector, um, it goes in through a narrow chamber, and all of a sudden the path is restricted. And um, as the water goes into the injector, it's right back here, this little, this little assembly back here. Mm -hmm. um, as it goes into that chamber, the water path comes in, it's restricted down um, to, a, to a choke point. And then suddenly the choke point opens up. And right at the point where that choke point restriction opens up, there's a hole where air is, is allowed to come in. And, the, and because of this, as the, as the water is compressed into that choke point, as soon as it expands, it creates a vacuum. And so this, this injector, uh, called a uh, Venturi injector, uh, in this case it's called a Beckett valve. There's all different types. But they're ways of inducting or drawing in air. Use it by shoving water through a thing, you can create this vacuum to suck in air. Um, and because it sucks it in under such a high pressure, the bubbles are so tiny it makes this chamber look white. And remember what I said before about tiny bubbles? Tiny bubbles are more the more tiny the more the, the tinier the bubbles, the more surface area of bubbles you can pack into a small area so it may, it's able to collect more waste. Right. So it makes the protein super more efficient. And then as the bubbles rise up, so the water goes into the injector, that water is mixed with air, and it goes into this box, and the bubbles want to go up so they can pop, and they're buoyant, and the water wants to go down because gravity is pulling on it, so they separate. Um, and as they go up, they react in this chamber with all the organics, oils, and proteins. They stick to the air bubbles, and then they float up, and you get this nasty brown liquid, which is liquid poo. Mm -hmm. um, it's organics, oils, and proteins that smells like rotten eggs because it's basically sewage. Um, and as the air bubbles rise up, um, they will collect all these oils and organics and proteins. And so the, the foam on the top becomes darker and darker. And that's why the top of this protein skimmer, which needs to be cleaned, is dark because it's collecting them, um, oh, and when the bubbles pop or the foam pops, it splatters that sewage, that concentrated uh, soup of organics, oils, and proteins. It pops and they splatter on the acrylic. So the waste then goes into this waste collector, and then we come along and we empty this out like once or twice a week. So the protein skimmer's job is to remove waste. It's a form of waste export, and, um, and it's doing it 24-7.